Saturday, May the 26th, 2012, and unusually, I'm doing a Saturday walk. Reason being, um, this walk I've been waiting for four years to do, well, several years anyway, because you need permission to cross uh, the initial section of farmland, and the code has been acquired today to get the gate entry. It's a glorious day, blue sky, around about 70, mid 70s, and a nice strong easterly breeze, just taking the uh, heat down a bit. So this is Time Out Walks, book one, walk 26. One of the few that I've left to do in book one. So uh, it's about 12 and a half mile, should take around six hours. It's now 12 o'clock almost on the button, so let's press on and see what the uh, walk's all about. Interesting little street map here, just as you leave platform two. There's the railway tavern, like so many pubs today, boarded up and closed down, up for sale. Though the pub's no longer a early morning coffee stop, this place is. Looks very new. It's called Shelford Deli. And as well as having uh, a farmer's market today, there are a number of possible provision points uh, and several other cafes as well for those that uh, need an early morning kick. Parish Church of St Mary the Virgin, Great Shelford. And judging by the London bus behind me, which has just pulled up, looks like there's a wedding taking place today. There we go. The old route master. Stood opposite Kings Mill Lane mentioned in the text. And here's an example of one of many thatched buildings I've seen thus far, making use of uh, former local raw materials. So here we go. The uh, private entrance to Rectory Farm and associated buildings. It's about to cross the railway line, but I've just heard a train hoot, so we'll ponder here a second. Point 12 of the text. Typical uh, Anglian scenery here. River Cam's down here on my left somewhere. Sorry, on my right, as I speak. Now, once again, Typical cuckoo territory. Still not hearing them. The omnipresent chiff chaff's about. Would love to hear a cuckoo though before the season ends. Little cluster of meadow forget me nots there. Skylarks around and chaffinches. Very different walk to last weekend, which was quite up and down. That's the beauty of the uh, network southeast card. Get to see all sorts. Now there's a bird whose song I do not recognise. I can't see it clearly through the camera either on maximum range, as you can tell by the shakiness, but uh, one I'll check out later. I'd guess a summer visitor. Now this is, I say, classic cuckoo territory. 
but where are they? I know this is a uh, quieter time of the year for them, but you should still hear the odd male now and again, I'm sure. just flash flooded off judging by these tracks today tinder dry again but obviously uh, it's done the plants the world are good classic wheatland territory this there's the noisy M11 there in the distance I can't hear it yet but no doubt I will do shortly a rather pleasant aroma coming from all this cow parsley just as I approach the M11 which you can now hear and pass under and clearly this is the uh, river cam not the little tributary I was looking at a few minutes ago give locals a little idea of where I am. Excellent idea this park and ride. Now the smell of, uh, the rather pleasant smell of the cow parsley is dominated by, not sure if this is rape or borage on my right. Possibly rape judging by the bad smell. pleasant scenery. This uh, farmyard track is certainly worth following, certainly worth the effort to get the permission. Although having said that, um, I didn't have to put, put any code in at the main gate. I haven't even seen a main gate. So I'm assuming it was that double gate that I passed through right at the beginning where the cars were parking up for the wedding. That's probably why it was open. There's a bird I don't often get to film. A little quail. Sorry, or is it a red-eared partridge? Yeah, it's a partridge. Funny enough, stood right beside the A10 as well. Lovely shot. So as I say, notices here about a temporary footpath diversion closed from the 4th of Jan 2011. Whether those works are done now, I don't know. Soon find out. And here we are, right next to the A10. Horse blocking stones have been moved by the looks of it. Okay, crossing over the bridge over the cam, and there are brown trout in there, believe it or not. Not sure if I can pick any up now, but uh, they are in there. Not quite as clean as the water I was filming in Bavaria the other week nonetheless still supports fish life the Hawkston Mill building I wasn't able to see any thatched roof building prior to this mind you as described in the text not to worry the way is fairly clear just stood near to the uh, chemical factory mentioned in point 18 of the text 
and yes it does hum a bit so it's a wonder these rivers are supporting any life to be honest with you various sluices leading into the mill few seats around point 18 of the text with uh, bins next to them for those that need an early respite pleasant enough surroundings the um, footpath is rather overgrown but it looks like some of my colleagues that have done this walk earlier today have um, cleared it for me Not sure what's going on behind this uh, aluminium tin fencing, but uh, it looks like it's going to be a brownfield development, housing most likely. Nothing wrong with brownfield. It's when it gets into the greenfields I'm concerned. The Church of St Edmunds, Hawkston. Yeah, there's a notice there telling us about the site I filmed a few minutes ago. It's a previous crop science Reed GM, I guess. A site that was contaminated. It's now being cleared by all accounts prior to residential houses being built. Interesting to see if any surveys are done prior to someone buying one of these properties along with all the other searches that need to be done. Walking on the bridal way towards Haslin Field, the lunchtime stop, and ahead of us there is Rectory Farm, which uh, one would presume is the same Rectory Farm where permission is sought for the uh, walking across their land earlier. Big old estate, all owned by the university's end of the day view from point 24 of the text with the church at Haslin Field just about being visible there in the distance that's going to be my lunchtime stop as soon as I film the pub there this really is a very pleasant breeze today just what the doctor ordered Delightful walking weather this. So, looks like the old saying's right. May cast a clout till the May is out. And it's certainly uh, out today. Absolutely delightful aroma coming from that bush and accordingly the weather's delightful. Lovely view this is, almost Suffolk-esque. Lovely contrast of colours here, the yellows and the reds with the poppies. angle on it here worth recording again and then over there in the distance you get the silver sheen of the grass and the white of the cow parsley yellow hammers singing in the background somewhere but still no cuckoo I wonder if anyone on their time out walks has heard one and where Just looking at those bushes over there, just struck me that they provide a lovely 
contrast of colours when in full bloom as they are now. You've got whites there, you've got pinks, a bit of green. What a lovely sight the countryside must have been years ago when the bushes were more abundant pre getting ripped up. Lovely. Twenty seven of the takes following the river can again. Point twenty nine of the text, which I've reached more by luck than following any uh, book instructions. A little bit of confusion there down at point twenty eight in the text. Anyway, probably my fault. Madness in the midday sun, that's probably what it is. Playing fields mentioned in the text. Lovely chestnut blossom there. I think that's an Indian chestnut, isn't it? Or is it horse? God knows. A water pump here. At the entrance to the lunchtime pub stop, the Little Rose Pub. Where of course you'll be able to watch England during the Euros, if you're into that sort of thing. And I might well be. Could be amusing. There is said modern pub, set amongst trees and with a nice garden. Great examples there of using today's good sunshine. Excellent. Haslin Fields uh, village sign, with a company and gardeners nearby. Lovely, thank you for that. No sundial though. Millennium sundial, interesting. Someone with a sense of humour lives here, which is more than that greenkeeper's got. Stupid idiot turning on his motor when I asked him not to. Lunch is served almost. Just hope there's no weddings on today. Here is said church under refurbishment. Now I'm going to have a problem finding a seat in here today, I think. Amazing building this is. Built in 1746, I do believe. And I'll show you why in a second with this uh, extension to the rear. Look at that for a storm porch. But just on the ceiling, oh sorry, on the roof of it there, the uh, roof has left his mark. 1746. Now I'm surprised that lead hasn't been nicked yet. Such is society today. I blame the EU for that. Give us a referendum. Actually, I can't get in the storm porch. Being used as a shed at the moment. Pack full of chairs in there. Not sure if they're visible. So there you have it, 1408. So uh, thus far, 
to the lunchtime stop. I've been walking around two hours. So I've probably done about five miles, I guess. Information here for those who want to visit the tower or church. It's a shame that uh, refurbishment's going on at the moment, but there you go. Needs must. Now this is an interesting lunchtime stop. Brilliant, never cut, had a lunch in one of these before. And there's my uh, donator, Francis Powell, 1996. Lovely, excellent. Okay, 20 to 3, lunch has been had. But uh, while I was having lunch, this headstone caught my eye. Rather worrying, actually. I've got an auntie, Pat and an Uncle Tony Jenkins. As far as I know, they're still alive and kicking. That's an amazing uh, coincidence. I hope. Good use of former pews here as well. Out in the grounds of what appears to be a little conservation area. As evidence there, with uh, drawing of something. Bethany. No, it looks like uh, no, nope, not sure what that's a drawing of. The rather nice looking oak cottage as mentioned in the text. Yeah, I think that painting that I filmed in the churchyard could have been an example of this forget-me-not. Welcome shady walking, point 36 of the text. Point 38 of the text, and we now get a couple of kilometres of road walking, albeit along a nice, quiet country lane. So if you did the road walking in the morning, and didn't do the shortcut across the farm, you could be pretty annoyed with this walk today. Signs over there on the left that, of course, Cambridge is uh, massively involved with the science industries. and uh, has its own travelling telescope over there which we might get a closer look at in a minute runs along some kind of railway line observing the men in black and whatever else is up there including that commercial spacecraft at the moment Great example at last, yellow hammer. Look at that, a little bit of chalk and cheese. Excuse the shaking. Maximum uh, range as usual. However, I'm trialing with effect from my last video, YouTube's new anti-shake facility. So let's see how that works. I wonder if it'll sort this out. Interesting, because I know I'm shaking badly here. Great. Classic uh, Hawthorne environment there. He has let me get a bit closer. So why not 
not take advantage. That's a great shot. Now he's chirping the warning note. It's going to take off in a second, I know it. Look at that, it's like a budgie in colouring. Beautiful. Stood next to the trackway here for the travelling telescope. And that's about as near as I can get. Amazing uh, thing that is. The landscape from point 41 in the text, the footbridge over Bourne Brook. Plenty of skylarks around here. Shortly to cross over the uh, M11, where all this peace and tranquility will be disturbed. There is Bourne Brook. With a rather interesting uh, cabbage type plant on the river bed. I wonder if that's one of the plants that uh... oh my god I've forgotten her name now the red-headed gardener is uh, trying to tell us about that's taking over our ponds and rivers. Can't think of her name. Amazing. Great here. Not up to Lark Rise Farm on your left. You can hear by the noise anyway, that tells you which way to go. About to cross over a noisy M11. And that name I was trying to remember was Charlie Dimmock. She's leading the campaign at the moment against uh, exotic plants that are taking over our rivers and garden ponds and suffocating them. The view back from the bridge. On top of the M11. Cambridge and Sandy marked up there. Looking back from the four the M11 bridge in the distance. Now in Granchester with more good examples of thatch cottages. Point 44 of the text mentions the Rupert Brook as a possible late lunch stop. Well, it would be very late because it's now quarter past four. My onward journey is right down the high street there. Very pleasant looking red lion. Another possible late lunch, early tea stop. And the green man. Parish Church of St Andrew and St Mary, Granchester. Confirmation of the time there. Slightly skew with going in because I'm wearing sunglasses today, so bright. To quote ZZ Top. the rear of the church. Okay, this is the part of the walk I'm not looking forward to as it gets very touristy and busy. Uh, still, needs must I guess. Had a pleasant um, quiet period thus far. 
Let's see what lies ahead. Okay, and this is what you get in the orchard. Not my cup of tea, if you'll excuse the pun, at all. Massive queues everywhere, chop a block. Pretty much what you'd expect on a nice summer day like today. Well, bearing in mind the weather, I've seen the queue longer. Not too bad at all today, I guess. I've seen it right down there in the past. Now outside the old vicarage, which was, when the text was written, owned by the archers, Lord and Lady. Not sure if that's the case now, though. Rather pleasant uh, home. In the orchard. Don't forget to put your tray away. Uh, this section of the walk, as someone commented in the feedback, is definitely the least interesting. But on a quiet weekday, it would be pretty good, I should imagine. Thousands of young fish down there. I'm not sure if the camera picks them up, but uh, there they are. Okay, leaving the privately owned Granchester Meadows behind. Managed by Savills, I notice. This being point 53 of the text. Point 58, walking across the Lammas land, which is being uh, well used today. And I'm not sure if I may have caught up with the um, original Time Out walking group or some of them. Those two ladies there look like they've got the instructions in their hand. Just get a feeling. Swan on its nest. Whoops, was I disturbed it? Point 60 of the text, next to the Bella Italia restaurant. <laughs> Tourist mania near the Mill pub. Walking down Laundress Lane, Back Street, Queen's College, apparently. Doesn't do much for me this part of the walk, but uh, I'll film it anyway. The entrance to King's College. There is the college. Gateway to Clare College. Yeah, that's the plan. And then this is the Ren Library's over here somewhere. Clare Bridge over there on the uh, ahead of me. Walking towards Trinity Lane Junction. Rules are made to be broken, I guess. <laughs> Trinity College. Senate House 
passage. The Gate of Honour with its sundials at the top. Rather impressive church there, not named at this point in the walk. No doubt it will be later. Just about to turn left into Trinity Street here. Gonville and Caius College. St Michael's Church. Trinity College Chapel. Pretty impressive. St John's. Sydney Sussex College. Great St Mary's Church. Easy to miss this point of the text. Point 71. And there is said G. David bookseller. Edwards Church. King's College. <laughs> St. Benet's Church. Walking down Free School Lane. And for once it's free of tourists. The college I've just filmed behind me is uh, Corpus Christi. This is self explanatory. Pembroke College. Just about all I can get of Little St Mary's Church in Little St Mary's Lane here, which ends the college tour. Apparently, we're now headed back towards the station. Point 78 of the text. We're next to the Hilton here on the right. Strangely enough. Part of Peterhouse College there. This is one of the backs uh, at the back of the Fitzwilliam Museum. And it is absolutely covered with that green algae that uh, old Charlie Dimmock is trying to get rid of.
as you can see nothing gets through it kills all life underneath so the river dies very difficult to get rid of 0.79 of the text and the walk is almost done walking across Cove Fen I've just realised this film has now become my longest OK, back at Cambridge just missed the 1921 having stopped for uh, some tea in Cambridge so I'm a little late today but such a glorious day no need to worry so and judging by all these bikes parked outside it couldn't be anywhere else but Cambridge well that was a uh, very pleasant walk um, God knows how many miles I've done today certainly more than 12 and a half if you include the tour of the colleges so I would highly recommend paying or going on the okay, let's carry on get a quiet corner over by this new student development opposite the station called CB1 good investment this potentially but uh, yeah as I was saying very pleasant walk particularly the first part and well worth applying for the permission to cross the fields because that uh, saves a lot of road walking there's a little bit of that in the walk and it could become annoying if you have to walk roads in the morning as well bit touristy in the uh, second part of the second of the afternoon but that's what you get with Cambridge and that's why I've yet to do the Oxford Circular don't fancy doing a whole day of that so that walk will probably remain till the very last walk book one timeout walks book one walk 26 completed